black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. And um, I've been a big fan of this show. I binged the first season, the second it came out. And then I recently just watched it again to prepare for this. And what I love about the Rachel and Leah of it all is that on paper, they kind of seem like polar opposites. We have Rachel's very regimented, very kind of orderly and, you know, very much disciplined. And Leah is a little more like, oh, I'm going to follow my heart and, you know, I'm going to kind of take things on the fly. And both are kind of to their own detriment sometimes, but also, you know, good things happen. So starting with you, Rain, what is it that you think that Rachel sees of herself in Leah? I think Rachel sees someone that even though they don't necessarily go to extremes over the same thing, she sees someone that also knows what it's like to dive off the deep end. Um, ha, pun intended. Um, <laughs> but she sees someone that knows what it's like to feel so passionate about something that not necessarily everyone else around understands. Um, and going into season two, I think that's something that um, they actually find themselves connecting over, um, which is really beautiful to me. But I think she finds that even though they have these different, um, they're polar opposites, so to speak, this commonality, she finds kind of comfort in someone that understands what it's like, like she finds, sees herself in her a lot. And how about you, Sarah, from uh, from Leah's perspective, what is it that she sees in Rachel that she sees her herself? I mean, I think for, like you said, Leah follows her heart. She has some deep, deep, strong feelings. And she follows her instincts. Um, her feelings rule her. And while um, Rachel has been able to channel that towards you know a very specific goal of of being a high, high achieving diver. Um, you know, you have to have so much passion and so much heart to follow that. And Rain has just captured such a beautiful character of Rachel. Um, you know, there are such, there are so many moments that she brings that have such high emotion that have such high, you know, it's such packs, such a punch. Um, and I think that's sort of their commonality that there are, there are these like fierce feelings about, about things. And that's why they butt heads so much. And that's why they, they, you know, sort of, push apart from each other but it's I think also the thing that brings them um you know they sort of have the shared bond like it, it, halfway through season two they they'll, they'll fall apart without each other um and they're the only ones who can sort of keep each other grounded even though they're they can sort of be like on rockets in different directions at times well I like that we kind of see Rachel lose her hand and her handle on things and then <laughs> we see Leah kind of lose her footing and mm -hmm. the way that they kind of help each other back from that it's so interesting now one thing that always cracks me up about this show is that they took these seven um, these eight girls but they were all kind of uh Ooh, problematic <laughs> to begin with. They all kind of had their own issues going on. Now, if you were a teenager at this point and you ended up on a desert island, starting with you, Rain, what's the first thing that you do? Uh, pray. Uh, <laughs> 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 it was like, it's just like, because you're just stunned that it even happened. You know, I know myself, I'd just be praying to the Lord. Um, <laughs> but I think then you do have to kind of be like, well, this is it. This is, this is where I am um and I think teens are underrated for that but teens are extremely intelligent um and have so much creativity that I think um I love that this show kind of showcases that they can get their shit together you know um and I think that's that's my perspective on it <laughs> how about you Leah I think the first thing I would do is probably walk around the island um but then who knows how big the island is um so that could be never walk alone I guess always bring a buddy um <laughs> there we go. yeah I'd agree with you rain I feel like uh teens are very adaptable um you know not to say that you know washing up on an island wouldn't bring lifelong trauma but um <laughs> but I think they would sort of you know, from the jump sort of work with it and 
I hope that I would come up with some plan, even if it failed me. Um, I would try to figure out something to do, whether it be finding water or hoping well, to find rescue. Yeah, that's the first step. And hopefully you will never be in that scenario. Hopefully this just stays on screen. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies, for taking this time to talk with me. And I wish you the best for the show. Thank, Thank you so much. much. <laughs> Bye-bye. And I am a huge, huge fan of this show. I have uh, just loved it. And I binged it right when it came out. And I just watched it again. And I binged all of season two. So I'm ready for it. I'm so excited. Um, I know. It's so, it's so fun. <laughs> Starting with you, Jenna, let's talk about Martha. Um, near the end of season one, we kind of see her coming to some uncomfortable truths. And she has a very kind of optimistic outlook on things. But you know, we kind of see those things being challenged. Can you tell mm -hmm. us kind of what we have to look forward to in terms of uh, her worldview changing in the next season? Yeah, well, her optimism and her positivity was almost, well, it was toxic positivity because she was creating a narrative out of like a survival mode because she doesn't want to face what's like after her and eating her like from the inside out, really. So by the time season two comes, it's finally just a 180 and she takes this challenge and decides like, I need to accept this and I need to go through this. So she, she does go through it essentially, but <laughs> she's very more defiant with it. And she's starting to take her power back little by little. And it's not an easy process. You'll see she has falls and stands back up again, but it's just there also, really is along oh, with that sorry yeah like not the best so environment much. to be going to be like coming to terms with that yeah you know you're expected to provide you're expected to hunt do all of these things for these mm -hmm. women and then you know at the same time you're dealing with this horrible yeah like, turmoil or this horrible like instance trying to conceptualize it and stuff like that you know mm -hmm. it's definitely well, not the that's scene that's one of the things actually kind of leading into your character, Sophia with Fadden, where she has been pretty consistent in terms of, you know, being kind of level headed. She might have had a couple of moments here or there, but she is kind of the rock in the midst of these people who are undergoing all these changes. Right. However, right. she has had changes in of herself. When we mm -hmm. first meet her, she's kind of like, oh, I, this is why I don't have girls as friends. And then we see her kind of almost having mom vibes and mm -hmm. really kind of <laughs> loving these women. So what is it that you feel that Fadden at my in these women now how have they impressed her um you know how you know when like the world underestimates you you sort of start to underestimate the world in a way um and I think Fatten, she has so much faith in um so many things that I struggle with um about herself you know she's got she's got her and she knows that and, and so like surviving, that's not something she had to prove. Um, what she did have to prove to herself though, is that she actually can care about people um, over herself. And that is quite the journey in and of itself. And then we, um, to kind of juxtapose against that, we have Dot with, uh, with you, Shannon, where she is kind of at the beginning, she's like, we're surviving, you know, I've watched Bear Gorillas, I've watched Survivor, everything, and a lot of their survival is hinged on that knowledge. What do you think it is about those kind of survival shows that spoke to Dot? I think it was something that she used to, she used to watch with her dad. It was something very, something that they connected with. And I remember watching Bear Girls with my own father. Um, that's something that we did and a lot of knowledge I was like ah oh, you, you running water you, you had to drink the running water not the still water like I still remembered some of the stuff um, and I think just those those sh shows were important to her because it, it was something her dad liked and that was time that she got to spend with her dad and just forget about the complications of life and what he was going through and, and just be able to be with him and spend time with him 
And now she gets to do that on an island in real life with her newfound besties. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how that kind of, she also feels the ramifications of that and those connections. Mm-hmm. So you women do a wonderful job at this show. I just want to hug all of you through the screen and be like, <laughs> I just want to give you a bath and new clothes <laughs> and everything. So I am so excited for more people to be able to watch. Thank you so much for talking to me about it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am a big, big fan of this show. I started watching it the second it came out, binge through it like a weekend and just rewatched it and just binge the second season. So I'm so excited. I um I want to start with you. Is it Irana? Is that how you pronounce Irana, it? Irana, yeah. Irana, wonderful. Thank you, my dear. So cool. Tony is a powder keg, <laughs> and she not only explodes, but she has the ability to kind of set others off. But then we mm. see her in these moments where she has a lot of grace, especially towards you know Shelby, even within our favorite couple of Shoni, <laughs> which made me laugh a lot. <laughs> Tell me about where that, where you feel that capacity for Tony's grace comes from. Mm. I mean, I see, for me, it's more of a question of like her capacity for her powder keg, her aggression and her like volatile nature can come from. And I feel like she lashes out to keep people at kind of an arm's length and not to, uh, so she doesn't care, they don't care, it's fine no one loves me we're good you know Mm -hmm. and so I think that her letting her guard down and letting somebody in she sort of gets to put that to the side for a little bit and it's still close by like in case (laughs) things go a little sour for her but I think um yeah just opening her heart to be able to love somebody and I think you can see that with um Martha as well beforehand like she's there's um a grace the word that you know you use that with and her relationship there so um it's beautiful to see that crossover into the relationship with Shelby well the relationship in and of itself especially going into the second season there are so many moments that are goals there are so many moments that are red flags (laughs) and I wanted to ask you Mia especially when it comes to Shelby and her faith journey we see a lot of her tokens and her icons be shattered you know by this revelation that hey I am who I am and that seems to be at odds with how I've been raised can you Mm -hmm. tell us more about uh Shelby's kind of faith journey going into the next season that's a really great question it's a very interesting um relationship that she has with her god because you know religion was something that was at the center of her life and still remains close to the center of her life um, since yeah, since she was born, um, and her her connection to God is kind of important for her because she feels so out of control of the way that she feels, and she th- I feel like she thinks that having a God be in control over her life, her destiny, and the path that she takes it brings her some sort of solace. Um, but you know, we've seen at the end of season season one, we see those as you said earlier, sort of shadow. And now she's kind of, it's a very different relationship that she has with her faith in season two than in season one, that's for sure. Um, She's still kind of grappling with it. She's still kind of trying to figure out um, where she stands and what what her belief is now, because this is the first time in her life that she's been able to make decisions for herself and experience life as the person who she is deep down so she's still trying to figure out what that feels like where those boundaries are what makes her feel good and what's what's right yeah so it's she's struggling with a bit of that (laughs) well I love just kind of the dichotomy of she's willing to kind of give up everything in her past for someone who's may not be ready to accept that and Mm -hmm. watching you two play it out is just so beautiful it's such a fun couple to root for and to yell out it's like come on guys get it together (laughs) (laughs) with all the love thank you guys so much for talking with me about this show and I wish you nothing but the best I can't wait for more people to watch (laughs) thank you so much Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.